Hi guys. It is a lovely but little bit chilly night here in the Point Lonesome Swamp in the Oasis of Freedom as we count down the last couple of hours of November 2021. That would be Tuesday night, November 30th, 2021, and I uh, was just thinking a uh, couple hours ago that I had totally spaced out doing a chronicle of the collapse today. I've been busy with a lot of stuff today. And then my uh, old buddy, my Lieutenant Tom, Lieutenant Tom from Vermont, who is one of my main uh, lieutenants here in the Doomosphere, sent me this article. And I got really excited by the, uh, by the title and whatnot. And I, it's from Scientific American. And I, and I was really looking forward to uh, being introduced to a new voice in the Doomosphere and named Henry Gee, G-E-E, -E, I believe. But I gotta say, guys, as I started reading this article in, in Scientific American, I was not very impressed by it. So, uh, you, you know, like with my sermons on Sunday, I, I, I try to really butt out when uh, I'm, I'm reading somebody's sermon, you know, it, it, I do this to stir debate. So this guy is some sort of paleontologist. He probably knows more about the, the subject of human extinction uh, than some turnip seed who fell off a truck in Texas. He, he, you know, who am, I to, who am I to debate this guy? But uh, debate this guy I'm going to. And so I am, um, we're, we're going to check in with this fellow. I don't think there's room for a little dog in the computer here. And we're going to check in with this fellow and see what his notes are about human extinction and make a few comments along the way. And uh, you know, so you're not wanting to go back to your little bed or what? I'm sorry, little dog. You can go back to your little bed now. Um... Uh, Anyway, let me put on my two pairs of glasses here and call up this story from Scientific American. I, I just wonder who there at Scientific American vets these people. So uh, the name of this article, and this is an opinion piece. Okay, this is not just a straight article. This is an opinion piece by Henry Gee, G-E-E, -E, is a paleontologist, evolutionary biologist, and an editor at Nature. You would think that this guy has it all going for him. His latest book is A Very Short History of Life on Earth from St. Martin's Press published this year, so I don't know if this is a piece out of that book or not. But anyway, according to Henry's opinion, <clears throat> and I agree with the title, humans are doomed to go extinct. Humans are doomed to go extinct. Habitat degradation, low genetic variation, and declining fertility are setting Homo sapiens up for collapse. All right, we have some good news in the name is fair. Take it away, Henry, and give us some good news. Cast your mind back, if you will, to 1965, when I was six years old, Henry, when Tom Lehrer recorded his live album, That Was the Year That Was. <coughs> Lehrer prefaced his song called So Long, Mom, a song for World War III by saying that, quote, if there is going to be any songs coming out of World War III, we'd better start writing them now, close quote. Another preoccupation of the 1960s, apart from nuclear annihilation, was overpopulation. Yes, do you remember in the 1960s when overpopulation was a preoccupation? 
And it goes without saying, Stanford University biologist Paul Ehrlich's book, The Population Bomb, is published in 1968, a year when the rate of world population growth was more than 2%, the highest in recorded history. <clears throat> okay, so far, I guess so good. Then we have this sentence, guys. Half a century on, the threat of nuclear annihilation has lost its imminence. The threat of nuclear annihilation has lost its imminence. I, I don't know if this Henry Gee character or, or the editors at Scientific American are aware of the doomsday clock. Okay? Uh, it... it any clueless moron trying to tell me that in, in the year 2021, the threat of nuclear annihilation has lost its imminence? The threat of nuclear annihilation is more imminent than it has ever been. Okay? I, 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 have, had, uh, I, I have had many uh, rants, sermons... Uh, I, I just about stopped reading right here. I, anyone to say anything that clueless uh, is about all I need to hear. And, 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 and like, you know, anyone that clueless calling himself whatever he's calling himself and getting public, getting his opinions published in Scientific American, you, you know, the damn editor should have run this dude out with a stick. But anyway... I'm trying to give the guy the benefit of the doubt. We all have blind spots, as Book Hermit doesn't know. Anyway, okay. <clears throat> as for overpopulation, more than twice as many people live on the earth now as in 1968, and they do so in very broad brush terms in greater comfort and affluence than anyone suspected Although the population is still increasing, the rate of increase has halved since 1968. Current population predictions vary, but the general conclusion is that it will top out sometime mid-century and start to fall sharply as soon as as soon as 2100, as soon as 80 years from now, the global population size could be less than it is now. Yes, <laughs> can't argue with you there, Henry. Yeah, cannot argue with Henry. The, as, as soon as 2100, the global population size could be less than it is now. It, 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 as soon as tomorrow morning, the uh, global population size could be less than it is now, uh, due uh, in part to the fact that the threat of nuclear annihilation is more imminent than ever. But anyway, in most countries, including poorer ones, the birth rate is now well below the death rate. In some countries, the population will soon be half the current value. People are now becoming, are, are, are now becoming worried about underpopulation. And so guys, again, uh, I am going to break into here about, about this whole specious argument uh, about, you know, the population uh, rising, even though with the lower birth rates, the population on this planet is continuing to rise. All right, so at least he does admit that the population is still going up and, uh, and, and depending on uh, which little uh, crystal ball you read, that sometime in the second half of the 20th century, uh, with all sorts of assumptions about nuclear annihilation, the real pandemic heading our way, and everything else, that just based on, uh, on, on birth rates and death rates, that the population 
uh, by 2100 will start to dip below 8 billion. So what, what what's this basically is saying uh, this absurd statement that, okay, we don't have anything to worry about. We, we just have to keep the 8 billion people or probably 10 to 12 billion people, you know, before it hits the top of the curve and starts down. And then by 2100, so 80 years, we're supposed to keep supporting the, uh, the global population of over 8 billion people without uh, all of this stuff. I, I mean, assuming that you can discount all of this stuff uh, that we talk about on, on Collapse Chronicles, everything else being normal, uh, that this planet is just supposed to support 8 to 12 billion people, and then sometime after 2100, we can start to dip below 8 billion people. The, 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 this whole argument is so absurd. And, and, and for Scientific American to be, you know, basically giving their nod of approval to this, it, 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 it is completely unsustainable eight times over, and, and, and nowhere in, in this does it mention, you know, go look at my, uh, go look at my interview with, uh, with Tim Garrett uh, and, and others I've had, you know, talking about how the global economy, you know, the, the resource extractive, fossil fueled, uh, global economy is rising at, like, what is it, uh, four times, ten times faster than the population. And this is why, you know, Tim Garrett uh, was explaining to me that between now and 2050, with the population we have right now, that we are going to use as that uh, this population at this economic level is going to use more of this planet's resources uh, than we have used since 1750. In the next 30 years, we're we're, we're gonna we're gonna take as much out of this planet as we've taken uh, in the last 270 years in the next 30 years, as Tim said, something has got to give. There is no way in hell, no way in hell, uh, that the population curve is, is, is going to go like, I'm, I'm trying to, from your viewpoint, go up, up, up till somewhere in the second half of the century and start going down and then we're going to be back down to about where we are in the year 2100. Please, you're hurting my intelligence. Okay, Henry, I'm sorry. I know you have the resume. I, I'm just a doomer. Anyway, now that I got that off my chest, let, let, let's, let, let's, let's try to, uh, to press on here. As a paleontologist, I take the long view. Mammal species tend to come and go rather rapidly, appearing, flourishing, and disappearing in a million years or so. The fossil record indicates that Homo sapiens has been around for 315,000 years or so, but for most of that time, our species was rare. So rare, <coughs> in fact, that it came close to extinction, perhaps more than once. Thus were sown the seeds of humanity's doom. The current population has grown very rapidly from something much smaller. The result is that, as a species, Homo sapiens is extraordinarily samey. S-A-M-E-Y, I love that word. Homo sapiens is extraordinarily samey. 
there is more genetic variation in a few troops of wild chimpanzees than in the entire human population. Lack of genetic variation is never good for species survival. So I will give him that. Okay, then we have this one, guys. And again, the, the great sperm debate. What is more, over the past few decades, the quality of human sperm has declined massively, possibly leading to lower birth rates for reasons nobody is really sure about. Pollution, a byproduct of human degradation of the environment, is one possible factor. Another might be stress, which I suggest could be triggered by living in close proximity to other people for a long period. For most of human evolution, human evolution, people rode lightly on the land, living in scattered bands. The habit of living in cities practically on top of one another, literally so, in an apartment block, is a very recent habit. <clears throat> Another reason for the downturn in population growth is economic. Politicians strive for relentless economic growth, but that is not sustainable in a world where resources are finite. Homo sapiens already sequesters between 25 and 40 percent of net primary productivity, that is the organic matter that plants create out of air, water, and sunshine, as well as being bad news for the millions of species of other species on our planet that rely on this matter, such sequestration might be having deleterious effects on human economic prospects. People nowadays have to work harder and longer to maintain the standards of living enjoyed by their parents, if such standards are even obtainable. Indeed, there is growing evidence that economic productivity has stalled or even declined globally in the past 20 years. One result could be that people are putting off having children perhaps so long that their own fertility starts to decline. And uh, so this term, that you know, economic productivity has stalled or even declined globally. I don't know if he's talking per capita or what he's talking about, because uh, I, I, th there are plenty of people who would, uh, who would look at the global GDP of, uh, uh, of now compared to 20 years ago, uh, obviously Tim Garrett being one of them, and, and, and spending about 30 seconds to see that the, the GDP this year is, I don't know how much bigger, how many times bigger than 20 years ago. Maybe the individual economic productivity of each citizen, particularly here in this country, but uh, I would put a huge asterisk by that, or maybe uh, I'm mixing up his terms. But anyway, Okay, an additional factor in the shrinking rate of population growth is something that can only be regarded as entirely welcome and long overdue, the economic, reproductive, and political emancipation of women. It began hardly more than a century ago, but has already doubled the workforce and improved the educational attainment, longevity, and economic potential of human beings generally, which seems to be in direct contradiction 
Let's see. All right. Indeed, there is growing evidence that economic productivity has stalled or even declined globally in the past 20 years. Next paragraph. Uh, it has already uh, doubled the workforce and improved economic the economic potential of human beings generally. Hmm. There you go. With improved contraception and better health care, women need not bear as many children to ensure that at least some survive the perils of early infancy. But having fewer children and doing so later means that populations are likely to shrink. Okay, but the most insidious threat, this is according to a paleontologist and uh, evolutionary biologist, the most insidious threat to humankind is something called, quote, extinction debt. I love that term, extinction debt. There comes a time in the progress of any species, even ones that seem to be thriving, when extinction will be inevitable, no matter what they might do to avert it. The cause of extinction is usually a delayed reaction to habitat loss. The species most at risk are those that dominate particular habitat patches at the expense of others who tend to migrate elsewhere and are therefore spread more thinly. Humans now occupy more or less the whole planet, and with our sequestration of a large wedge of the productivity of this planet-wide habitat patch, we are dominant within it. Homo sapiens might therefore already be a dead species walking. The signs are already there for those willing to see them, such as the imminence of nuclear annihilation. <clears throat> the signs are already there for those willing to see them when the habitat becomes degraded such that there are fewer resources to go around when fertility starts to decline, when the birth rate sinks below the death rate, and when genetic resources are limited, the only way is down. The question is, how fast? I suspect the human population is set not just for shrinkage, but collapse and soon. To paraphrase Lehrer, if we are going to write about human extinction, we had better start writing now. So anyway, I do appreciate uh, that uh, Henry G's or Henry Gee, however you pronounce that dude's name. I do appreciate his uh, input as a paleontologist and um, and evolutionary biologist, you know, looking at it uh, from the wider lens of evolutionary biology. So now we, what I would take away from this is I would just add that to the imminent threat of nuclear uh, annihilation and the fact there's no way in hell <clears throat> that this planet is going to uh, continue to support uh, this overpopulated, uh, overconsuming planet uh, of the 8 billion that we have now. There, there, there's no damn way. As Tim Garrett says, something has got to give. And with that, I'm going to wrap this up and uh, pour me a, another margarita <clears throat> and go watch a couple of ep episodes of the Omeletto. If you guys have not found the YouTube channel Omeletto, O-M-E-L-E-T-O, 
do yourself a favor and check it out. Bye, guys. We're going to come back with our... Uh, we're going to do an oilprice.com roundup tomorrow. I haven't done one of those in a while. Come back tomorrow for the oilprice.com chronicle. Bye, guys.